So every year I try to bring a couple of different ways that herbs and plants can be um, integrated into your holiday as gifts because it's really fun. Um, the plants I selected for this year's um, other than the ginger, the plants that I selected for this year can be cultivated in your own backyard. So, and cinnamon bark, okay, we haven't done that one yet, but um, I wanted to focus on just how many of you out there are gardeners or like to grow plants? And, and, and another thing about the, the plants that I worked with and brought with me is that a lot of them are gonna appear in your kitchen culinary cabinet, you know, so it's kind of a rediscovering your spices in a whole new way. Uh, your oregano and thyme and marjoram will never be just for food anymore. So, and I'll tell you a little bit about why. Um, so um, what I wanted to start with were herbal teas. Herbal teas are great gifts. Everybody needs to hydrate, right? And how about having herbs be a part of that liquid beverage that we need to take in. The teas that I brought with us, with me today, are safe for kids and adults. And um, they vary according to their topic and what they can be used. The high C tonic, I, I packaged that up so you could see how pretty it could look. You might want to include like a tea ball if you do gift this with I mean, a label is always good and directions. Most of these beverage teas are a tablespoon per cup. I don't think I wrote that on your handout. Um, but that gives you kind of a good dose, a taste of the herb and a bit of the medicine. Some beverage teas go as little as um, uh, go as little as a teaspoon per cup, and I don't feel that that gives you the benefits that, that plants can offer you. You're gonna say, herbs don't work, and it's because the dose is really important depending on the plant. So um, the teas, uh, most of the recipes that I brought to you today, um, I love this book by Rosemary Gladstar. It's called The Family Herbal. Very affordable, it's maybe $20, $25, and it has, for every age group of your family, from children to the elders, it talks about uh, ways to you work with plants more of as food type preparations and making things that are very easy and beautiful. So that's, that's where I'm bringing some of these here for you today. Uh, so the teas, again, are kind of self-explanatory. The tummy tea has primarily, this one is spearmint and chamomile, and so I tend to like spearmint a little bit more than peppermint. It's got a brighter flavor, but both can be used, and it's um, equal parts for that tea. The stressless tea, this is a plant called bee balm. I don't know if any of you recognize that plant. It's, um, the, the, the leaves of that plant are what scent Earl Grey tea. So bee balm is, is a very pretty plant. The bees do love it. That's why they call it bee balm. And um, beautiful flowers. So primarily you'll find the leaf, if anything, at a bulk herb shop. But if you, are, um, if you want to grow these plants, they're very forgiving and very fun and beautiful. And you can harvest them during the year and have all of this stuff ready at the end of the season for like totally free gift giving. You know, it's really fun. So um, the high C tonic is really great for this time of year in general, and it comes out a very pretty holiday color, uh, and the herbs in there, all of them have vitamin C rich herbs, and so not all of them, but the high C particularly, it's got the rose hips, the hibiscus, which gives it that beautiful tint, the lemongrass, and what else was in that one? Cinnamon. 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 Cinnamon's just for that, that holiday flavor too. So. Um, another thing I was going to mention that I'll tie into the bath salts is um, the tummy tea specifically could be all, you could make it as a tea and give that and you also prepare them a, a bath salt. If they have children that tend to get colic or if they have babies, things like that, these are very practical gifts that can be, again, useful in more, more than one way. Um, one of my favorite ones that I wanted to show to you today was herb infused honeys and I'm going to demo a, a rose petal one so ideally you want to do with fresh rose petals but uh, this one these are dried they're organic and um, that's always important when you're making medicine and I'm going to put typically if you look on your handout the difference of, of fresh versus dry is dry will not have the element of water and when you add for example fresh ginger this is just a slice of ginger. I peeled it and sliced it. It has so much moisture in it, it's the thinnest right now. I just started these. I can pass it around if you guys want to check that out. Um, these little bottles I got at Bed Bath & Beyond, very affordable. One of these at a different store was $4 each. So don't, don't, you have to go for the discount and for the very cool jar. But what I was saying was with the ginger, because it has so much water in it, it will thin the honey a little bit, shortening the shelf life perhaps, but making it very flavorful very quickly. The ginger will need no heating. For example, I'm having to do the heating method with the rose 
because it's dried for one. Um, heating honey is a tricky thing because honey will be damaged nutritionally and um, its antibacterial properties decrease when the, when the honey is heated above 95 degrees. So candy thermometers are helpful when you're doing this or you can do the no heat method or a water bath. This is fresh thyme and I'll talk a little bit about why I chose fresh thyme but um, let me not burn the roses and I'll get back to that. So I'm putting about two tablespoons because I really want it to be rosy. And these honeys are very versatile. They not only flavor your tea, they can be used as marinades, they can be used as bastings or added to baking, put on scones. You can cut um, this herbal honey with butter and have it be a spread. So it's very, very fun. And so what I'm gonna do now. Where'd you get the honey? This is from, uh, my supervisor let me take some supplies. So we get our honey from Snoqualmie Valley, I believe. And there's so many great local beekeepers. And I did not remember my candy thermometer, so I'm, I'm only gonna keep this on heat for two, two minutes maybe. And let me find my spatula. So you don't, you, you don't have to heat it. You could also do a water bath method, but it's thought that the plant material has a chance, the heat kind of lets those plant cell walls break a little bit and empty out their volatile essence into the honey. The warming it is just a kind of an activation process and that's why it's very brief. It's like my hot plate is on too and I'm just about to turn it off. So all of these other honeys I brought were not done with this method because they were all fresh. And the cinnamon stick, I just put the cinnamon stick in and put it in a water bath um, so I'll show you guys what that, what that looks like here. And with my handy popsicle stick, I'm going to see if the honey, oops, has taken on any heat. Can you, pick, can you buy um, bulk honey from like PCC? Yes, you can. You can, and I would suggest it because these gifts get expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but, but God bless the bees. Without them... We have very uh, few crops to eat and um, not much delicious sweetener to use. So again, the heating of the honey is optional. If you do do it, just keep an eye on the temperature. Um, I, I personally, and I'll show you what I mean by the water bath method here. Let me just pull that aside. This is what I did with the cinnamon. Because it is a bark, the heat is no longer on, I would just kind of let it rest in my water for a little bit and then you'll see uh, and this one has changed a little bit of color since I began and then I'll pass the time around to. So for the cinnamon stick you would just put the stick into the honey and then put it into the water bath? Yes, bag. yes. That's what, I, that, that's what I did. Depends on your jar, depends on how many gifts you're giving mm -hmm. because if you wanted to make um, and, and these can be paired like for example the thyme honey could be um, prepared with the cold and flu bath salt and given because because thyme infused honey is thyme is an excellent antiviral and antibacterial herb and uh, it's that uh, uh, for example let's see I have this one's for tasting if you guys are interested I'm going to pass around popsicle sticks so take a popsicle stick and stick it in and pass it along this this um, honey I'm passing a around was with lemon thyme. Lemon thyme is really fun. It, the flavor of lemon does come through a little bit. The second one I made is just with fresh thymus vulgaris, the original culinary type of leaf. And so you're like, wow, well now how are you gonna get the herbs out of that, right? That's gonna be kind of tricky. So with dried, uh, with the ginger, I'll let you know that um, you don't actually have to take the ginger out if you use it within, say, three months, which ideally you will, and the ginger will become candied. The honey is continually pulling all the moisture out of that, and it will become candied where you could, like, stir fry it, you know, at the end of it and eat it. So um, honey has that power to hydroscopically pull water out, and, um, but as it does so, it becomes less uh, of a preservative. So beekeeping has been around since the time of the Egyptians and uh, so it's been, honey has been used to preserve and extend the, the life of our foods for a very long time. Um, 
Raw honey, this is very interesting that I found out. Raw honey, which has not been filtered and has a lot of those enzymes and proteins and compounds that are very protective, that has shown um, to be effective topically for um, staph infections that are uh, antibiotic resistance. So MRSA, people could be using like raw honey. It's a, even what, if you get scratches or cuts yourself, and you don't have a Band-Aid, that could be nature's Band-Aid, really. Let it dry. It's going to, again, pull all of those, the, the moisture and the bacteria out and clean out that wound. It's really an amazing substance to use. Great for facial uh, masks, too. You could do an herb infused. The rose petal honey could also be applied to the face and be very, very beautiful and smell nice. You could also, if you wanted this to be a face mask gift, you could add rose essential oil to it and say external use only. Don't forget that part, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you can have a little bit of rose essential oil, but too much will be irritating to your gut for sure. Um, so the possibilities of your, your herb infused honeys are pretty endless. I was going to experiment also this year with a chai infused honey, like put a stick of cinnamon, a fresh ginger, some cloves, some black pepper, and see, what it, see how it goes. Maybe some star anise, which would look really pretty. And you could give them in a larger jar that, all of that and just tell them how to use it, but it looks pretty. I think the herbs look pretty in there. If you take the herbs out, it's still nice, but the magic, there's a little magic missing in the presentation. So um, just keep that in mind there too. So what I'm gonna do now, this, this barely got warm. I'm just gonna take this off the heat, keep it right over there. So we talked about straining. How do you strain it? The rose petals are going to be trickiest because they're dried. Um, you could use cheesecloth and just in a, in a sieve, uh, do you guys know what sieves are? Those just, you know, that little colander type thing that has the wire meshes and that, like what I'm gonna do right now is just pour my honey, fill my, my gift jar. Let's see, I know I brought a funnel. Actually, I'm gonna go funnel free. <laughs> and um, some sources say you can let your honeys, herb honeys, infuse for three weeks. So this is like a nice time to start some batches just to experiment with. And um, near the end, like right before you give them, you would, if you wanted to take all the herb material out for them, you'd have to heat it and gently strain out the herbs. But leaving them in together for as long as possible will only improve the flavor. Would you take the like the um, the time out or? I I I will not right. on those. I mean, it's it's really going to be a preference for yourself and as you get to exper experiment with these. But I won't even necessarily personally like the rose petal honey. I'm probably going to keep myself okay, but uh, I'm not going to take the roses out because they're dried and they're not going to decrease the the preservative power of my honey. If I had fresh rose petals, I would be concerned that after. Six months, if I haven't used it, I, you, know, just, you just want to be, be careful that you're not going to harm your gift, you know, the people you're gifting gifts to. Okay. We'll have a little bit to taste at the end. It didn't all fit. Okay, that's sticky. <laughs> Yes, I would, I would, because you know, flower petals, uh, roses are edible flowers. So uh, when you're choosing these gifts, most of the plant material is going to be food-like. So you don't have to take it out. But what if you have people that are new to herbs and new to this kind of thing, and they're like, "Why are you putting this stuff in here?" You know, it just takes a little bit of explanation on your part as to what what this process is about. Fresh fresh rose petals are actually ideal, but you know, fragrant dried organic rose petals work just as wonderfully. Do you have any more um, were there any extra handouts that made it to the back of the room? Thanks, Martha. So um, the, did anybody notice the hint of lemon thyme? I guess it's just still getting its way back to the, uh, to the rest of the room. But the people up front, did you notice the hint of lemon in that taste? So one of the, there's an Ayurvedic, uh, 
philosophy about um, uh, honey and lemon. How many, even my father, when I was little, any time I had a sore throat or a cough, he would go to the kitchen and boil some water and squeeze a lemon and put some honey and, and give me spoonfuls of that. Delicious, okay, and it worked. Um, the honey and the lemon act to thin the phlegm, right? It thins the phlegm, it helps you expectorate it a lot more. Adding the lemon to the, the lemon time to the honey increases that antiviral and antibacterial protection. So it's, again, it's just another very fragrant, tasty way of getting additional medicine into your loved ones. So, it's, and it tastes great, and again, it's just the, the versatility of these herbs as you get to know them, it's, it's endless fun. So, um, uh, yeah, um, let's see what else I wanted to tell you. So some of the interesting things I found out about what happens to um, honey when it is heated over 95 degrees is you lose over 200 different protective antibacterial and enzymatic properties of the honey. That's pretty significant, and it's just, you know, just you can turn your back on the, on the oven and, and it's gone. So just be aware that when you're baking with it or gift giving with it, you know, the honey is, is ideally protected from oxidation and from too much heat. The oxidation factor is you always store your honey in glass or plastic. If you see it in the store, it's only in glass or plastic. If it's stored in metal, it has a reaction with it and can damage the, both the container and your honey. So glass and plastic as ideal. Let's see here. And so these, again, can last indefinitely, especially if they were dried plant materials uh, and can be, again, added for foods or for um, beautifying your, your, your skin. So what I'd like to do now is move into talking a little bit about uh, bath salts. How many of you guys have ever made them before for gifts or for yourself? Or so they're not that hard to make, but what I created on your handout was just a, a list of different ideas that have like targeted purposes. For example, um, I came up with some recipes, a relaxation blend, cold and flu blend, sore muscle soaks, and a skin soothing soaks. Really, it's endless. Um, but I wanted to, before we get into the herb part of it, I wanted to talk about the healing properties of the salts themselves. So we know that um, salts and bathing in salts very detoxifying and, and um, helpful to our lymphatic system. It helps us to unload all of the, the waste that our bodies have difficulty processing. Not only that, but it just clears away um, you know, the, the sweat and dirt that we have on our skin. Um, also, people that are prone to dry skin or if they have irritations, like uh, maybe they're like a six-year-old that's always climbing trees and scraping their knee. You know, it could be, um, it may s uh, irritate the skin slightly because it's cleaning the salts. You know, sometimes if people are like, oh, you put some bath salt and I've got an abrasion. It's cleaning it, There's, the sting will go away, but it, it will speed the healing of it. Um, and you can always add oatmeal to your, to your uh, bath blends, especially for kids or for people that have abrasions or are prone to dried skin. So that's one of the ones we're gonna do together. Um, I was pretty, um, I was pretty shocked to find out, maybe shocked is a strong word, but according to the Acad National Academy of Sciences, Americans are magnesium deficient. And what that tends to um, be contributed to is high rates of heart disease, stroke, osteoporosis, arthritis, joint pain, digestive maladies, stress-related illness, chronic fatigue, Magnesium is super important. It regulates, it works with calcium to regulate um, the blood. It work, magnesium is like the stress relieving mineral. And without it, a lot of these other things can be problematic and we, we need it. It's a big helper. And hey, Epsom salt. Epsom salt, according to, okay, yes, you want to eat magnesium rich foods, which are often green leafy vegetables, right? Um, one of the interesting things about humans and plants is um, humans have chlorophyll, that's their life-giving um, fuel, and, and plants have chlorophyll, humans have hemoglobin. The only difference structurally in their chemical arrangement is the middle atom. For plants, it's magnesium. For people, it's iron. It's the same, so this is like, uh, magnesium is just, it's, it's in almost every green leafy plant. So by having a diet rich in green leafies, you're gonna be getting a sufficient amount of that, but we can also be treating our bodies through our skin, which is our largest eliminative organ. That bathing has been um, 
it's part of every ancient tradition uh, of cleansing with herbs and salts and things of that nature. It cleanses the energy field, it cleanses, it brings better sleep. And the, again, there's a big exchange osmotically with the skin when we bathe. We, we, we release toxins and debris, we gain magnesium and any healing herbs we might have in our bath with us. So it's very nice. Um, Epsom salt, I was again just pretty amazed and I, I included that in your handout because I was shocked that something so affordable can be a helper to us almost any time of the year. So uh, improved heart and circulatory health, improved ability for the bodies to use insulin, um, flush toxins and heavy metals from the cells thus easing muscle pain and really helping the body to eliminate harmful substances. Uh, it helps relieve stress. Again, magnesium is necessary for the body to, to help um, bind serotonin and incre increase that feel-goodness that we need throughout the li our, our life, especially this time of year where we lack enough sunshine. Unlike today, this is a beautiful one. So um, a, a, what they suggest is a pretty hefty dose. When you put it, put it in your bath, is two cups a day. Uh, two cups per bath and have it have at least three soaks a week to have the maximum benefits. But for your gift giving, instead of going out and spending a lot of money on the Himalayan pink salts and the Dead Sea salts, you could go for that, but maybe don't forget to use the Epsom salts because it's magnesium sulfate. These are naturally occurring minerals, again, just to like the other salts. But um, for our pocketbooks when we're giving gifts, this makes it go farther and you're actually helping your, your loved one a little bit more by adding that. And so um, what I would like to go over are just some of the blends I created and uh, talk to you a little bit. And then together we will make the skin soothing one. And I'm going to ask for someone, someone who has a family member that suffers from psoriasis or eczema and I'm gonna gift this to you. So it's gonna be something that one of you can take home as a starter kit for your, um, for your gift and for your loved ones because psoriasis and eczema are very, they're very painful, they're uh, inflammatory conditions that systemically cause um, oozing sores and redness and, and it's also, it's digestive ultimately, but it, it exudes itself and shows its, its, um, its symptoms physically and that can make people feel very self-conscious. So these are very easy and beautiful ways to help people that have those types of things. Relaxation, who do you know that doesn't need some relaxation. So, um, of course, we've got rose petals, rose geraniums. If anyone is int into um, scented geraniums, I feel like an old lady when I say that, but they are fantastic. Scented geraniums, can, they have to be brought in during the winter, but at your local nursery, you could start collecting them like me and be a nerd. But I have a peppermint, a peppermint scented geranium, a coconut scented geranium, uh, nutmeg, lime, rose geranium. These and the leaves can be used as potpourri. They can be used in your baths. They can be made into simple syrups and added to your baking. So scented geraniums are fun. So ask your local nurseries about them. I learned how to propagate them too. They're very easy to do. So if you don't find them locally, you come out to the herb fair in June and maybe I'll still have a bunch for, for to share. But. Um, both rose and rose geranium um, have antidepressant properties. Some of the other ones, again, I gave you a, many choices because there are many choices. You can either pick one particular herb or flower or create your own combination. And in terms of adding essential oils, that's really up to you because uh, the essential oils can be costly too. How, how many of you have worked with any Types of essential oils. So essential oils are a little bit a little bit to say about those is uh, they you want to spend more than five bucks for your essential oil because they are made through a process of, of, of distillation that if they are therapeutic grade all of the solvents are gone because some plants have to be uh, you, they, you use steam distillation, but they clean the column with solvents. And so you have to know that some companies don't do that, like Oracacia or Simplers, or there's another great company called Floracopia. So, um, and it's also, they're expensive also because it probably took 40 pounds of peppermint to make this bottle. You know, it's, it's like the plant's immune system bottled up for you. 
because the volatile oils, yeah, they smell great, but what are the plants, what are they doing for the plants? The plants make volatile oils not because it helps them, uh, like it's not anything to do with their caloric needs or this or that. It's a secondary metabolite that acts as a protective mechanism. It protects them from predators, it maybe attracts pollinators, but uh, it, is, it is the plant's immune system that we are borrowing and using in sense and, and as therapies for ourselves because many of these essential oils can have profound healing effects. And the reason we use them in some of our preparations for bath salts is because they just add that something extra when you put it under the running water, but it's not required. Like if you have a friend that has um, psoriasis or eczema, maybe that would be too irritating, you know, and just stick with the herbs and the oats with the salts. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. And uh, there are some great references out there. Uh, Simpler's, Simpler's Online has um, a great list of conditions and what, what essential oils might be helpful for them. So you can look at it from a therapeutic lens or simply a fragrance lens, or you know, both, whatever, whatever suits your fancy. <clears throat> and so, let's see, I'll talk about other plants. Simpler's, S-I- Yes, exactly. Simplers. They are based out of Sebastopol, California. Any questions so far? Okay. Essential oils. Um, Aura Acacia, A U R A C A C I A, and Floracopia. Let's see if I can spell that one. F L O R A C O E P O E I A. I don't know, I think I just, eh, on the spelling bee there. Copia. Please spell the second word, Aura. Uh, Aura Acacia, C-A-C-I-A. And Floracopia, uh, those are a little more pricey, but they have a very cool business model in that they go to third world countries and teach them how to use their plants to do these distillations and, and help build their own community by, by green living and, and um, like they have, sandalwood was almost extinct, but they have found a white sandalwood that is being protected and used and being grown sustainably so that we can enjoy that amazing scent for lifetimes, I hope. So, okay. So now what I'm gonna do is just demo a little bit about the, um, how to do the bath salts. The, uh, the essential oil part, this is my gift glass and again I have in my bag some business cards for Zenith Supplies which is locally here because they make they have these for sale the jars and these muslin sachets that are really great so you could get your bath salts ready and put that right on top and then ideally they fill this as full as they can so this type of jar will only hold maybe two baths worth but maybe they'll come back for more. <laughs> maybe they'll learn to ask you how they can make it for themselves if they really, if they use it as a foot soak, it might go further. So um, again, I guess you can't really gift someone a gallon size unless you, you have that available. And so what I, I pre-measured, um, this is three quarters cup Epsom salts with half a cup of fine sea salts. So it's a little more than the one cup total yield. But. And baking soda. Baking soda is um, very soothing to the skin too. So it also acts um, as a um, way for the essential oils. You always want to add your essential oils to the baking soda component because it holds holds them in suspension a little bit longer. So that when they're on, when you're running them through the bath, that is how it releases the scent a little bit easier. Okay, measuring cup. And so for this skin soothing blend, I'm gonna do half a cup of baking soda and then half a cup of ground up oats for that extra special. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask for, it'll be the, the first person who raises their hand, I'm going to gift this to them if they can tell me somebody who has an eczema or derm Okay, okay. Do you know, would they be bothered by the addition of a little bit of rosemary essential oil, or should I go essential oil free? I'm happy to, if you. 
Okay, so just, just for the demo's sake, uh, this is the moment where you would add the essential oils and, um, and then you want to just kind of mix it through with a spoon. I'm going to grind up my, um, this is what everybody else needs, by the way, a coffee grinder just for your herbs. <laughs> just for your herbs. Let's see if I can plug in over here. And I like a nylon stocking. Nylon stocking. Yes. Short nylon stocking and tie knot. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Tie. That is the. Right, and the muslin sachets can be reused. Um, you can just buy cheesecloth and tie everything up with a nice, pretty string or muslin. All of the all of the holding material can be reused, but you want to use it because you don't want to clean out your 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 backed up bathtub with all those herbs. I, I'm speaking from experience on that one. Okay, so I'm going to. Do you use any particular oats like the steel grown? Uh, these are. Uh, um, these are, I think, just rolled oats, organic rolled oats. I don't think they're steel cut officially. They're not instant, they're not instant. yeah. Uh, I'm also going to add a little bit of my herbs a little bit at a time. So for, in the recipe it says four to five tablespoons of coarsely ground herbs. I'm going to see if I can maximize my grinding. I'll start with two teaspoons of flour. So calendula is very easy to grow. It's a reseeding annual. I mean, it's beautiful. And it's internally and externally used for uh, inflammation. It has an affinity for cleansing the lymphatic system too. So um, it's great for skin. You'll see on the beauty aisle, calendula infused everything. Uh, it's great for baby's skin and it's wonderful. It doesn't have much flavor, so it's a great to put in everything because it doesn't, it doesn't matter necessarily. That was just two tablespoons of calendula. I'm going to keep some of the oats in there because chickweed, I think she's a little stringy. I don't know if it's, it, anyway, I'm talking to myself. This is a plant called chickweed, very cute name, and it is a weed. It, uh, chickweed kind of self-seeds and grows, um, it prefers the cooler temperatures. So you'll find it in some gardens right now. Um, despite the cold frost, it still sticks around. Uh, but during the summer, no, it's out of here. It likes the cool, it's cool and moist, and therefore its energy is cooling to hot conditions, very much so. Um, so calendula and chickweed are a good pairing for skin issues internally and externally. But if you go to the bulk herb store, I bet your chickweed that they have will be brown or yellow. So if you learn how to meet the plant, it's very easy to collect uh, and you just air dry it and it retains most of its green color. So it's very pretty that way. And so again, its properties are um, soothing and, and cooling to hot conditions. I'm going to do one at a time here. have that on the last sheet of your handout. Uh, I have some local sources for you guys to seek out. Oh, Bothell? I don't know. Bothell has one? Oh. I'm uh, sorry I didn't include them. I, I thought of five of them around town, so depending on where you live. So I've added a total of three tablespoons. I, I'm I'm big on the herb part. So play with your recipe. I did three and three. Three calendula, three chickweed with a half cup of oats. Okay, bigger bowl. <laughs> All righty.
And another thing to have around when you um, invest in your own herb is a paintbrush, <laughs> a dry one that you always use to just dust everything out. Every last drop of goodness gets in your batch. Okay, and I'm going to add the rest of this. Very therapeutic to make your own gifts too, I must say. And if you, you know, if you wanted to add something more for like a standout color, you could just add some herbs that aren't so ground up. Because the reason we grind it up is we I could put just big chunks fulls of, of the herbs, but the more you grind it up, it, again, you're breaking open those cell walls, allowing the extraction to happen as soon as it touches water. So um, that's why you have to be concerned when you buy powdered herbs, right? Because they're already powdered. They're just oxidizing. So if you can buy things in their whole form and grind it right before you need it, you get the most nutrients and the most benefit. Um, I, that's why I buffer this right up against it and always put it back, but I've never had any kind of, um, like I open it and there's a hole. So her question was, do you ever have a, a problem with the essential oil laden bath salts touching the plastic lid? That's a very good question because those, those can, that can happen, but I usually just protect the top with my muslin sachet when I give them, and before long there's not anything touching, you know, so it's just the first opening might be that contact with the, the herb material. But uh, ordinarily, they might have some that don't have this. This is just what I had from, from last year's gifts. Okay, so it's not rocket science, I know, but I thought it'd be fun to see it happen. And in my bottom of the, of the bowl, I'm just gonna put petals that, and these herbs came from our own garden. So again, this is just, Plants are here for us, and we're here for them. There's so much we can do with them, and so it's super fun to explore that through gardening. What's that? What kind of rose? These were calendula, calendula petals. So um, uh, also called pot marigold is what the common name. So again, I'm just kind of putting some chunkier s s for the jar just for that look of, oh, what's in there? <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna fill it up. So again, we're gonna gift this to this nice woman up front without any essential oils. But some of the, um, when I was looking up skin soothing and dermatitis types of conditions, rosemary essential oil kept coming up, which I thought was interesting. But I, I brought it with me, but again, we won't um, add that to this particular Leaves, absolutely. I didn't. I didn't do that. But you, that would be e better because it wouldn't be as strong as the essential oil. So that might be something you, you might want to play with a little bit later. Oh, very much so. If it can take our winter, La Nina. This is going to be a rough one again. <laughs> I'm like a little worried. Did you have a comment? Yes. So this might be on page three, four. four. Four, thank you. So it talks, uh, uh, the recipe's on the other side after it gives you the, uh, am I correct in that? It doesn't say salt? Oh, I think I wrote it under, yeah. The tummy, the tummy, I mean the skin soother, I made some exceptions right on that paper but I, um, there's a general recipe that you can use. Okay, so that looks pretty, right? And then you can make a label and with directions on how to use it. Again, ideally it's about a cup per bath or, and just say, call me when you wanna make more. <laughs> um, and you can, you know, there's a lot of easy ways to decorate this. You know, there's raffia that's sold at shops. You know, you can do all kinds of stuff. Put a bow on top, whatever you like. Here you go. You're welcome. Oh, my son. Are there um, 
you mentioned <laughs> the the tea, the tummy soothing tummy tea. Yes. In combination with the tummy soothing soak, and you mentioned colic. Yes. So, um, the tummy tonic tea has the two herbs that are really great for, that I think are really great for upset stomachs, whether you're young or old. Um, so, chamomile is antispasmodic, and so is, is pe peppermint or spearmint. So, what I was saying by having it be a gift set, so for example, this, these could be gifted individually, but when I, when I thought of this, I thought, wow, well, if my my friend, she's having her second baby. Um, she's really worried about her own sleeplessness and her, what if her baby has colic? I was going to give her, um, I was going to do the tummy, tummy bath salts. But I, what I was saying was with the, the bath tea, I mean the, the tummy tea, you could substitute four or five tablespoons of the tummy tea base into your bath salt mixture. That's what I was saying. So that in that essence, you have the, the um, benefit of your, your whole body experiencing that as well as internally just drinking that. Um, kids tend to like the taste of chamomile, you know, peppermint. I, I think it's a very nice tasting tea. So that's what I was uh, referring to. Does that answer your question? Yeah, okay. Did any, um, uh, let me talk a little bit more about why I created these combinations. So again, uh, you could do the tea. You could do a bath salt and um, say, wow, a rose infused honey. So they could be gifted as a set or just somebody gets all four, four little um, infused honeys if they wanted, however you want to set it up. I was just trying to come up with some creative ways of, of using <coughs> plants again. So um, this plant I brought with me, just these are giveaways too. Uh, this is a plant called Sweet Annie. Sweet Annie. It's a scratch and sniff. <laughs> and um, if you guys, if there's more than four people, please take the rubber bands off and share it with your neighbor because they, they can be put in your car, you know, sent your car up. But uh, this plant actually is a very powerful anti-malarial, okay? But it smells great. So it's a twofer, again. <laughs> there was a, um, there, I'll, I'll pass this around and then if you want some, you can split it apart. A few years back um, at, at Bastyr, there was a group of students that were studying. They were going to go to Africa. And so um, they wanted to educate their people about natural approaches to dealing with malaria and other ailments that were prominent in their area. And they themselves took dried Sweet Annie with them and drank it as a tea, as a preventative their entire trips. All of them stayed well. They, I sent them with Sweet Annie seeds so that they can learn how to grow that plant and use it as well. So again, plants can outwit the bugs, right? They have so many compounds that we keep them guessing. That's why <coughs> natural substances and natural compounds are always our best bet. As soon as you start isolating this or isolating that, nature's like, uh-uh, I got a bug that's gonna power through if you're gonna start messing with my matrix because nature is like that. Right? It's very protective. We talk about the healing power of nature and we know it deep down that if we're working with things that grow from the earth, we're going to be better off than things that are like white and powdered from a lab. Right? So there's a place and a purpose for all of those things, but um, this is my world <laughs> and I, I prefer to play with the plants and I know that that's probably why some of you came here today. Um, do you guys have any other questions or comments for today? Um, so it is, you probably have, I don't know if there are seed heads. That was still, when I, when I brought those with me, a big poof of pollen came out, a poof. So I don't know that they got to the seed bearing stage, but if you uh, email me, I have cards and stuff. I can, we save seeds and um, uh, it's easy to grow annually. Or if you don't want to save that, you could just shuck it into your garden bed and see what happens next year because there's, there's magic. There's magic in those plants. But I, I do have seeds for that too. One other thing was, um, this is a type of eucalyptus that's hardy here. I'm not sure of the species, but um, don't, don't, don't forget to glean from your neighbor's gardens. Because <laughs> this was in a roundabout in my neighborhood. And I was like walking with my son. I'm like, hey, this could be great for my cold and flu tea. So um, I was either going to make the skin soothing one or the, or the cold and flu tea. And, and actually grind it up so you guys could smell how much, how powerful this stuff is. Um, I can, you know, this, this one can be picked apart if you guys want and just like 
So again, take a leaf, scratch it, sniff it, take a part. It's just, again, it, sometimes medicines aren't species specific, like eucalyptus, for example, others are. So with botanical medicine, you're never bored. There's always more to learn. It's always fascinating. So thanks for coming, and I hope you have fun making your herbal gifts. And any questions, I'm happy to answer, or any ideas on your end, like if you've tried any fun herbal gifts that you want to share. <laughs> OK, thank you. So again, if you guys want cards for Zenith supplies, I have some up front. You got a lot of these cards that you sent from Bed Bath uh, Actually, I bought these from Bed Bath & Beyond. Everything else is better priced at Zenith supplies. Zenith. Zenith supplies. You can buy them by the case, and it's way cheaper. So I've got cards if you want. Otherwise, just Google them, and you'll find them. They're not far from here. So happy holidays. Thanks, everybody. Thank